Where I heard something run behind me. A square in the dark place, eyes that pierce the shadow, voice that chills your cold face. No one left to hide, no, no. Running through the silence, echoes in your mind's maze. Trapped in endless twilight Can't escape the mind gaze What up home slices, home fries, and homes of other varieties? So if you're new, welcome. I'm Emily the Fine Art Medium. I'm a psychic medium who specializes in the paranormal and I have a degree in social deviance. Now, many of you guys requested that I take a look-see at Dalen Spratt and take a look at his one of his most recent videos called did something attach itself to me and as always watch the full video so you can get full context of what is going on and obviously i'm only going to show short little clips and it's always important to show the original creator some love since it is their content and so he has many questions and i feel like i can provide answers and I did some channeling while watching the video and then had to pause and do a full session and so on and so forth. So I have answers for you, Mr. Dalen. And um, yeah, so I'll have pictures because I did render some images of the entities that I was seeing in the cemetery that he was visiting and the attachment that he's got going on and I'll also provide answers in terms of like cleansing solutions because that is important and that is something he did ask for so without further ado let's rock and roll okay so I would say about I watched three minutes in of the video and immediately I saw the skeletal looking entity roaming around the cemetery with murky gray energy and a lot of the stuff he was giving me was like head pain, pain behind the ears. I was getting a lot of like, my eyes were burning and they felt heavy, but that I think has to do with the overall energy of the location, the earthies that were lingering around, plus the entity there. So it's like a combination of things going on here. And I'll show you the image that I rendered. I did not draw this. I put in the exact details of how I saw it when I was channeling and AI created it. And I'll always be forthcoming and honest on the things I do draw and what I don't draw. But in this case, I did not draw this by hand. I had AI make it for me because it was faster. Whereas if I do something by hand, it'll take 16 hours. Um, so, yes, this is what I saw exactly, and I made sure that AI got it exactly right. So, yes, this is what I saw. It is not human. I wouldn't go as far as to say it is a demon. Um, a lot of times, when you're in places where there's a lot of death, a lot of negative energy, a lot of stale energy, you will get these entities that will feed on that stuff. So a lot of times you will get parasitic entities. You will get collector entities. This thing is bordering on the line of collector type vibes. He's there, not necessarily collecting souls or anything, but more so the energy that these earthies put out and the family is grieving put out. And so it just continuously feeds on that stuff. So, I don't know, I don't feel like it's the type of entity that would go home with somebody. It likes the energy where it's at. And so, it's more than likely going to stay where it's at because there, it's just continuous negative energy food source for it. So, Dalen, you, you don't gotta worry about that. Okay, that's not something to be worried about. And this thing doesn't really care 
too much of the living to like haunt them or terrorize them or do anything. Again, it's there to feed off of the energy output from the Earthies and the families. And it just looks nasty, really. Um, but yeah. Uh, seven minutes in, four seconds, I start feeling this whooshy or whooshing sensation in my ears. It's kind of like when you drive down the highway with your windows cracked open. It's got like that weird loud like feeling and it feels not so nice. That's the feeling I was feeling. It's very uncomfortable. Um, and because it was so uncomfortable, I had to stop and like meditate. And I always have a rose quartz with me. Now it's in my bedroom, but I decided to meditate with the rose quartz crystal because for me at least, now this could apply to other people, but for me, rose quartz helps me um, put or absorb negative stuff. So if I'm having any negative sensations while channeling, I will hold the rose quartz and try to funnel that into it so I don't have to feel it as much. But I did that and 95% of the energy, the bad energy that was giving me the pain, disappeared. So there's that. What are you doing by my car? Does the light in my car bother you? Now, at this time, where he's sitting in the car with his speaker and his spirit talker app, whichever one he's using, I forget, but there was a man in the back seat of his car, diagonal from him. So it's not the seat directly behind him, but it's the one behind the front passenger seat. But the thing is with this is it's a thick black shadow masculine energy. So I'm not seeing like details. A lot of times I'll see details of like what the person looks like. But for this one, he's just appearing as a black shadow, which sometimes that's just how they appear. Um, doesn't necessarily mean they're evil. It just sometimes with my um, skills, that's just how they appear. I mean, it is what it is. I will say though, every time I tried tapping in during the video, it did feel like my energy was being quickly drained, but it also felt like there was an entity there sitting and waiting for me to tap in to drain me. And so that made me very woozy and dizzy. And so I had to get smart about it. I couldn't just keep tapping in. If you're a medium, okay or psychic or whatever, and you're trying to get information based on the video or situation or whatever, take this as a lesson from me, because this happens sometimes, and sometimes, you know, when I do things, I don't prepare adequately, so in this case, I didn't prepare adequately because at first glance, I didn't feel like he was in any kind of, like, bad situation you know what I mean? I'm not saying he is now, but I'm just saying, like, it felt like it. the coast was kind of clear, but it wasn't. There were things still lurking around, and um, I should have maybe went into it better than I did and had more safety precautions, so that's on me. But yeah, so there's something there, definitely, and I'm pretty sure it is his attachment and I wanted to make a note that it's very strange that there's a lot of earthies there. And I was like, hey guys, um, why are there so many earthies? Because, you know, it's weird. Usually when you have cemeteries or graveyards, there's not typically that many earthies lingering around because of... They gotta feed off of the living to sustain their energy, right? And so at a graveyard or a cemetery, the only time you're going to have people there are those visiting. So if that place gets a lot of visitors, absolutely, you can have quite a few earthies there. But if it doesn't, 
then the other question is then why are they there so in this case this does seem like a semi popular place but the key thing here to remember is Dalen is using a spirit box and communicating okay and when you do that that shoots up a signal for anything to come in to interact so in this case he's in a I would say a decently large city okay and then that beacon goes up anything around that area whether it's from the cemetery graveyard or from the city itself they're all gonna see that and kind of flock to it and so that's kind of what happened here and so when the spirit box says seven to eight it validates what I was seeing speaking of large cities but yeah the spirit box says seven to eight which absolutely I can validate there are quite a few and interestingly enough too even the ones that weren't necessarily speaking directly to Dalen they're kind of like huddled in their own little cliques talking amongst each other so even if that signal brought them there and they weren't necessarily talking to him directly they still kind of were around and just like huddled and talking to one another and some of that can come across the spirit box and some of it you know is intentionally them communicating answers back to him so when he's talking to them they're not all from that cemetery or graveyard whichever you want to call it I know there's a difference but like when you're talking or trying to communicate whether it is through a spirit box app or the actual f box or however you want to communicate you're not always gonna get the things in the direct location you're sitting at you can get things around you that aren't necessarily you know it could be from the neighborhood next door it could be from I don't know two cities away like it all depends someone keeps saying they're sad who's sad this woman what's the woman's name who's sad so there's a lot well, the one woman that keeps coming in saying she's sad, why are you sad? I heard a deep breath. You said you want to live again? So you like the sound of it? What don't you like about being dead? What about life do you miss? At 11.45 here in the video, I heard he's going to go home with something. And I suspect it is the woman, the sad woman. And by the way, the sad woman, and I'll use this as a reference, if you know who Edvard Munch is in his painting called The Scream, where it's like the woman like, that's what the woman looks like. Um, but the other thing is she is extremely draining. She is an energy vampire, but even though she might or may have gone home with him, I don't think she stuck around for very long. And there's a reason that I'll get to, you know, later. When I was doing my meditation, I did see a lot of different faces. A lot of them looked male. I did see the female. Are there people watching me?
if there are people here watching me and you know it, can you please touch this red machine that's by your plot? The plot he's at and the person who he's talking to over the spirit box. That's not their plot. Again, it's just somebody from the surrounding area. Um, that's all I can really say about that. I will say this. I love that he calls it the resting community. I love that. That is a very respectful but creative way to refer to the location that he's at. So definitely props to that. I love that. Um, so 24 minutes in, I start getting more back pain. Um, and he's asking why it feels off. Part of it, again, is the woman there, the sad woman. Some of it is the entity that is roaming around the cemetery. And some of it is the psychological mind F that being a night, that being there at night does to a person. So he is right. He does point that out. Like, he's like, oh, I wonder if it's because it's night. It's like, yeah, that is part of it. So that is one thing to take into consideration. The other thing is, I believe, the attachment. I don't know. Something about tonight is off. Something about tonight is off. You know what it is. I just thought about it. I just thought about it. So this past weekend, I was in Pennsylvania in Gettysburg, and we was at a convention, the Warren Convention, and they had just like a lot of their collectible items, and we was in there taking pictures with them. They had the Annabelle doll. It was just a lot of stuff that we were in there doing. And this is the first session coming back from that convention and being around all those haunted items and like weird spiritual stuff. Like, I wonder if that energy is on me, which is causing the spirits here to not really feel me. I'm just now thinking about all of this, y'all. It's just now starting to register. It's just now, because the other day I tried to come out here and the spirit of fear, like, just jumped on me. Like, I feel like maybe I need to sage. Y'all, what, what type of cleansing can I do? Like, I wonder, did something dark try to attach to this journey from Gettysburg this weekend? And not just from Gettysburg, just from... Like I said, we were trying to do a special with the Annabelle doll. It was the real Annabelle doll in a case. Like, we were trying to get them to pull it out so we could do a spirit box session. But every time, it just wouldn't go through, y'all. Yeah. Yep. Y'all, I swear I heard something run behind me. I need a clean. Please let me know in the comment section, y'all. What are y'all getting? What are y'all sensing? Do y'all feel like I'm like, is that, is that, are y'all getting that? Do, can y'all tell that something's off tonight? Like, how can I, how can I flush all of the BS from these past couple weeks, y'all? Like, we've been in haunted towns. We've been in haunted locations. We've been with these haunted items and these objects, y'all. Like, we've been around just a lot of darkness the past few weeks and to come out here to our family it's almost like it's being offset or off put am i right do you guys is there something dark around me is that definitely how can I get this away from me? Yeah. 
Did this darkness come from any of the items I came in contact with this past weekend? No. Did the darkness come from any of the people I met this weekend? Yes, sir. Y'all, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I've been thinking about this ever since I left that convention. We, so the Ghost Brothers, me and my two my partners, we went to a convention in Gettysburg. And it's one of those conventions where we have a table, we meet and greet. And people know when they come to see us, we're not like all the other paranormal talent. Like we like to get up, hug you, embrace you. And y'all, I can, I promise you, there was a couple of times this past weekend that the energy I felt embraced me wasn't authentic. Like everybody that comes to these conventions aren't of the the most upright cloth. Like you have some that are that do dabble in darkness. Ooh, I don't know why that just hit me like a ton of bricks. Did I come in contact with someone dark this weekend? Some. Some. And my. What can we do to protect ourselves from that? Mary Ellen, were you there with me this weekend? No, I have events every weekend up until the beginning of November. What can I do to ensure my spiritual safety? No aspirin. No. You say aspirin? Remove it. Yo. The prayer word? Sure. Y'all, please say a prayer for me, y'all. If y'all love me, if y'all if y'all care about me. Please, y'all. I'm not saying something's attached to me. It just feels like maybe, and again, I could be wrong, but as I'm sitting here thinking, this is the thoughts that are coming to my mind of why tonight just doesn't feel as genuine as it normally does. Please tell me what you think. Do you feel like what I've been doing these past couple weeks, the things I've been around, the people I've came in contact with, the items I've touched could have had some sort of negative impact and please let me know how I can cleanse myself. I know of sage and all of that other stuff, but please let me know in the comment section, what can I do if I, like, what can I do to just, to reset, to reset. Now, he says here at 34 minutes in, roughly, he talks about being at the Gettysburg event and is wondering if something from the occult object stuck with him and is affecting the session at the cemetery. Now, I went to that Gettysburg event paracon event and i did see them there i did see dalen and his other two homies and honestly his line was so freaking long everybody loved him that i saw and at the time i didn't know he who he was okay and it actually made me want to look into him and so when people are like hey check his video out i was like wait a minute i saw him so yeah to me, that's kind of like a, a full circle, but I thought that was really cool. And to answer your question, Dalen, the thing is, now every entity is different. They all have their reasons for doing things and their tactics and maneuvers. In the case with some of the objects regarding the occult museum, the Warren Occult Museum, a lot of those objects will not attach to a person like the entities associated with them. The reason being is because 
They like the situation in which they're currently at. Now, if you destroy the object in which they are attached to, then yes, they're gonna wanna find a new place to go. So that's why it's always recommended that if you have a haunted object, not to destroy that haunted object because the object is the vessel for the thing to attach to. If you destroy the vessel, then it has nothing to attach to and then it's gotta look for a new place to go. And so they're quite content at being where they're at. Especially Annabelle, she's very famous, okay? And the notoriety that goes along with that, the entity likes it and it gets exposure, a lot of exposure because of the other events that they're taken to. And so they can feed off the energy in the locations that they're brought to, like the objects in which they're brought to. So there's no need for it to attach to somebody else. However, that is not to say that you cannot have residual energy or energy cords or tethers formed from the objects slash entities. And by that, I mean if you communicate with, for example, Annabelle, when you do any kind of communication, you have a cord or tether that is created because of that line of communication. And so you can go home with that, but that doesn't mean that the entity attached with you, you can remove those tethers by adequately cleansing yourself and making sure you have a proper routine of cleansing yourself in your space, you'll be fine. It's not something to worry about, okay? So you don't have to worry about that. And then again, with the objects, you don't have to worry about them really affecting you, okay? And plus Annabelle is so like in a protective case, like Tony Spare does a good job at making sure that she's sealed and can affect people in very, you know, severe ways. And some of the ones that are not protected in that way, again, they're happy where they're at. The way in which they get exposure to the public is enough for them. So Dalen, you don't have to worry about the objects. Now what you were saying about when you're doing the meet and greets, how you'll have some dark individuals and some of the stuff that they're into can affect you okay especially if they have really bad attachments and stuff like that yes that is possible I've seen it happen so in your case I do see a woman and this is the entity by the way she is a shapeshifter um her main form is a snake but she has multiple forms and a lot of times when you identify an entity they will try to trick you and try to um, transform into something else. I've seen that happen multiple occasions. So in her case, her one main form is the snake. I, <laughs> And funny enough, I'm not trying to make fun of it, but the way in which I saw this entity at first, it was a snake and she had black hair. So picture a regular stereotypical like blackish brownish snake with scales and then like black scraggly hair on it okay so i caught that and then she started to transform into something even more grotesque something more humanoid and again i did create pictures based off of ai and again this is as very close as what i saw but this thing has a feminine energy very like Black widow -y, like I'm gonna bite your head off after I mate with you kind of energy. Um, she is nasty looking. She got the sharp, cr like creepy teeth. Um, but yeah. From what I can see, you didn't pick up anything other than like residual energy. You didn't pick up anything from Gettysburg at least that's not my impression. The snake lady is around your solar plexus area, which is like your abdominal area. Um, so if you start noticing any like stomach upset or any upset or pain or anything around the, um, 
the organs in that vicinity, that could be, like, if it came out of nowhere, that could be, like, a good sign for you, like, oh, crap. Um, but the way in which it affects our body is different for every person. For me, my weak spot is my stomach area, and so for me, that's where I would be hit the hardest. So, I don't know that information about you, but if you have any, like, illnesses that you're noticing getting worse, it'll take your weakness and amplify it and make those things worse, unfortunately. But yeah, she looks like she's in the solar plexus area or abdominal area. It looks like she came from an investigation or something similar. And now, I don't know if this is a specific location or if this is just my, um, my indication that it is an investigation period, but I see you holding up, like, your phone, like, here's my phone. I see you holding up your phone like this, like you're either recording or taking a picture or something. And while you're doing that, I see you inside this house or building. It's got white walls. Or at least the walls are like a uh, off-white or cream color and then the trim of that building or house it's got like this green grayish maybe even brownish color um so if that place description rings a bell then that tells me you might have picked it up in that vicinity if it doesn't ring a bell then that's probably more likely my symbol of it being somewhere you were, like, investigating or checking out. Um, and I think, so jumping back to the earthy, that sad lady at the cemetery, her going home with you temporarily and then leaving, the reason why it's temporary, at least from my perception, is because this snake entity lady is kind of, like, overriding it and chasing her out. So that's why she might leave earlier. Like she would go home and be like, oh, bye, I'm not sticking around. It's, it seems more like she's not there and it's more of the snake entity. And the reason why the sad female Earthy is attracted to you in the first place is you're something she never had and something she took grant like took for granted when she was alive unfortunately so she's attracted to you because you're a nice guy <laughs> and yeah so i'm pretty sure the the snake entity is what was zapping me every time i try to tap in um and i don't know if this is something you might experience but like if you're experiencing any really bad body aches, fatigue, back and shoulder pain, feeling constricted in any way, like I'm, as I'm talking about this, my chest feels constricted. Like it's hard to breathe. It's so weird. I'm clairsentient by the way, so I pick up a lot of like body ailments and I will perceive them as my own. But yeah. You might notice some of those things at times. And also, the other thing that can affect your, whether or not you get a lot of activity, paranormal activity, communication through your investigation, spirit box communication, whatever you want to call it, um, a lot of it has to do with, in addition to everything I just said, um, mood frequency or vibration, and just like the overall vibes of things. So if you're going into this like uncertain, scared, what have you, you might not get t certain reactions that you want. You might get more reactions of things you don't want because there are things that feed off of that fear and negative energy. Um, you go in with a higher frequency you might have more benevolent things connect with you. You might have more earthies feel comfortable around you to want to connect. And so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot that goes into play here. It can also be like 
who was there before you and the people around you, the living people that are around you that are in the vicinity. Maybe there's people there that they don't like and are like, nope, bye. Sometimes you can have people with attachments that they're afraid of and they're like, mm, mm, mm. So there's so many different variables. Now you did ask about cleansing tips. So, okay. Some general cleansing tips when you come off of investigations or haunted places or whatever and you just want to make sure nothing comes home with you. You can burn your Palo Santo and sage if you want. So if you use sage and Palo Santo, just keep in mind that if you use the sage, you need the Palo Santo. The sage puts the hole in the energy, so it takes out that negative energy, leaving that space to be filled. The Palo Santo fills that hole with positive energy. That's why you need both. You can also do, and I'm starting to use these more, copal and frankincense. They're like now becoming my favorite because they're stronger, more effective. Um, but you can burn it, burn them together, and um, waft the smoke on yourself before you go home because you don't want to bring that stuff with you. Um, you can, they have spray versions of cleansing stuff too that you can use. You can use my handmade incense that I have listed on my website. Uh, uh. Um, but there are many different ways. You can take cleansing baths with, um, herbs and things. So you can do your Epsom salts, different herbs. I mean, you can Google different herbs if whatever fits you really. Um, having a quartz crystal, a black obsidian or black tourmaline would be very helpful. I usually wear them all on my wrist, but I'm giving my wrist a break, but I always have it somewhere. So like my necklace has beads on it. This is just hematite, but I mixed it with, um, I believe there's hematite and black obsidian. I have, well, I have my Scylla Solomon ring and I also have it in a pendant and it works really well for me. Now that's just me, it works different for other people. Some people like their crosses. I am more of a Scylla Solomon person. You can bring holy oil, you put it on all your chakras. If you know you're going somewhere nasty, you can prepare and put it on all of your chakras. Um, in this case, I would do it before you go to the location instead of after, but you can technically still do it after, but doing it before is always probably better. You can do holy water afterwards if you want. Um, again, there are so many different things you can do. I have a video that demonstrates on how to cleanse your space properly so you can watch that and on lights of midnight podcast we have 60 hours of content on season one about all about this stuff when it comes to entities cleansing all that stuff so definitely give that a look-see too if you're curious but yeah now for the attachment itself some people get miffed at me because they always think that there's some magical solution that'll help you get rid of the attachment immediately, okay? The problem is that it takes time because it, when you were doing something like this, you have to focus on your mind, body, and spirit simultaneously. You can't just be like, okay, I'm gonna focus on this and not even look at the other stuff. Everything works in unison so it's important that you work on it all. Now, when it comes to attachments, they 99.9% .9 of the time attach to traumas. They use your traumas against you. They feed off those traumas. They use the crevice or the crack that the trauma left behind to insert themselves to attach to you which is why focusing on your mind and healing those traumas is very important, okay? Some people think you can just, you know, cut cords and the entity or attachment's gone. You can cut cords, 
but those cords will just come back and the entity or attachment will just come back if you do not solve or work on the reason why it's there to begin with. So you can do all of that stuff, but if you don't get to the root of the problem, it'll just come back. Or something of equal or worse vibration will take its spot, and you don't want that. So that is why you need to work on your mind. So it's on the solar plexus area. So what does the solar plexus area control? And you might even want to combine that with the sacral chakra just because of how close they are together. So the solar plexus, and I'm looking at my chart, so that's why I'm looking up. Solar plexus governs our ability to be confident and its control over our lives. When it's out of balance, there can be things that affect low self-esteem, digestive issues, lack of confidence, fear, loss of control. When it's in balance, there's confidence, warmth, determination, self-discipline, reliability, a positive sense of self, and stuff like that. So, if you have any traumas that affect any of those things, that can be a crack for something to insert itself. And that might be an area you might want to work on healing. Whether you do that with a therapist, a Reiki healer, or whomever. It doesn't matter as long as you work on healing that area of yourself. Okay? So that's the mind portion. The body portion. Now, I'll be quite honest. Not everyone has the perfect diet. Not everyone is doing the best and perfect healthy things to keep them healthy, right? But when it comes to this, it is best to stay away from substances such as alcohol, any type of drugs, or mind-altering substances. Now, obviously, if you're seeing a doctor and you're being prescribed a certain medication for a certain ailment, Obviously, listen to your doctor. I'm not a doctor. Always seek a medical professional first. But in general, anything substance-wise, whether it's uh, the fancy dancy leaf. I don't want to get um, censored on YouTube, but you know what I mean. Hard drugs. I'm not saying that Dalen does these things. I'm saying for the viewer in general. Um, anything that can alter your mind. <sighs> People might be mad at me for that. So, yeah, just that's the body aspect. Take care of your body. Like, take care of yourself so you can make the best judgment calls and you're not making mental health things worse, okay? That's really what I'm trying to say. And then the spirit end... Yeah, is the cleansing part, like I said. But you also want to make clear that you don't want this attachment. The fact that Dalen is aware that there's something off is great. It's a great start. And he already has um, a great foundation with his guides. So it'll make it easier for him to work with them to get rid of the snake lady entity. And as long as he focuses on his mind, body, and spirit, and he's in great communication with his guides, and he's adamant that he wants this thing gone, it'll get going. It'll just take some time, because those things obviously take some time. But the bulk of it should be pretty much figured out, for the most part. But... Yes, I wanted to make this video for him. So, Dalen, if you see this video, let me know down below. Let me know if it helped you in any way. And, guys, share this out to him if you can so he sees it. So he can get um, the information that he needs to help him get rid of the snake entity. Because she nasty and you don't want that in your life. Um, 
because it can bring on illness, it can bring on bad luck, it can bring on accidents, depending on how far it goes or how long she's been around. But yeah, guys, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all soon. Peace out. Deep within the silent dark, I found a flame, a tiny spark.